in the making of a nation, there are three fundamental aspects which we struggle with in the beginning. When we say a nation, the first and foremost thing is the territory, the, border, the borders, the boundaries of a nation. It is <laughs> it is sad that we have to divide the globe into nations, but right now there is no other way to operate. Right now, nation is the largest segment of humanity that we can address. So nations are needed for now. So when we say a nation, it is a question of territory. When it comes to territory, the very first step of starting India as a nation come with… came with breaking up of the territory, not in a geographically sensitive way, simply breaking up of the territory in a most insensitive way, which killed over six hundred thousand people because the partition took that many lives and millions of lives were uprooted. There is still a generation of people who experience that. Their memories are terrible. We tore up the nation into three pieces without any sensitivity to the people who existed there. Above all, the success of a nation depends today or for any time. The success of a nation does not depend on its military exploits or political processes, but on the success of its businesses. India as a nation has known this better than anybody because just about two hundred and fifty years ago, this was the largest economy on the planet. Over thirty percent of the world's exports were from India. But when we made the nation, <laughs> unfortunately, we cut off all our trade routes and made a nation. Our trade routes which went into Central Asia, into Europe, into Arabia, were cut off. Our trade routes which, had, which went into Southeast Asia were cut off. Only that was left is the maritime routes. Otherwise, all trade routes were cut off because people, for whatever reason, I don't want to go into <laughs> that, but we cut off our trade routes and made a nation and we struggled for over three decades not knowing how to do business. What we had done for over ten thousand years, suddenly we did not know how to conduct business because all trade routes were cut off. Even if you gave away the land, at least you should have kept a highway or a railway <laughs> which went into Arabia, Central Asia and Europe. Today or many years ago, we would have highways and railways going into the European capitals from India. It would have been a completely different nation. So we cut off our trade routes because it's like this. You okay for a story or will you fall asleep? No, because for most people, once I say once upon a time, they think it's bedtime. <laughs> Not so long ago, hello, a pirate entered an Irish pub. When I say pirate, these days you think of the Somali pirates, not like this, a classic pirate. So he entered the Irish pub. He had lost his right leg, so he was on a wooden stump. His right hand was gone, so he had a hook and he had an eye patch, classic pirate. He walked in and sat down and ordered drink. The bartender looked at him and said, Hey, Jack, what is the problem? Last time I saw you, you were fine. How did you lose your leg? He said, Oh, what to do? We were in the high seas and Her Majesty's cannonball came and took off my leg. But no problem. The carpenter on the ship fixed me up pretty good. The stump works as good as a leg, I can even dance. Then he served him a drink and when he saw he had a hook, 
for her right hand. He said, what happened to your hand? He said, oh, I was in a sword fight, you know, some fools don't know that you have to hit the sword with a the sword, they hit my hand. So I lost my hand, but no problem, my blacksmith fixed me up with a hook, this works better than the hand. Then as he was drinking, he asked him, but what happened to your eye? He said, I was trying to navigate and I was looking up and the bird poo came and fell in my eye. The bartender said, but the bird poo will not take off your eyeball. He said, yeah, but I was new to the hook. So we were new to freedom. So we cut ourselves up without knowing what we're doing. The next aspect of making of a nation is the systems and processes that we follow. Our administrative systems, our education systems, our political system, the executive aspect of it, our military and our judiciary, these are all different systems. When someone occupies a nation, they will form certain systems. Those systems are created for control. Unfortunately, without much modification, almost ditto, as it was during the British era, era, we just took the rules as they were and continued the same systems. Because of this, it was like we were driving with our brakes on. Doesn't matter what we do, it goes only at that speed. It doesn't pick up speed because all the systems were designed to control, never designed to liberate the people. All the systems were shackles, so many shackles within a shackle that no matter what you do, you're doing… you're thinking you're doing the right thing but it's not moving ahead because we did not reinvent the systems for a free nation, we imported or we inherited systems of an occupied nation and tried to run a free nation. I think India, one or two generations of people have lost possibilities and have suffered immensely because of these kind of systems. I'm saying, this is the mentality of the occupier, that everybody, every citizen is a criminal. If you tell me the rules, why will I not follow it? The rules were made so ambiguous, nobody knows what's the damn rule. No matter what you do, you feel like a criminal because you do not know what the rules are, they're so complicated. I was talking to a very top corporate lawyer, and uh, something they were trying to interpret to me. I listened to this whole interpretation. I believe if somebody says something, I can understand. But I did not understand. So I asked him, see, you are the top corporate, corporate lawyer in the country. Do you really understand what is it that you're telling me? <laughs> he said, no, Sadhguru, I don't understand <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> So even you don't understand, then what is it? He said, that's how it is. So these systems, now we are trying to clean up. A few major moves have been made. Unshackling India's business so that it can go up. It is at the same time, <laughs> going through this endurance test on a daily basis, Indians have become super resilient wherever they go. <laughs> running an obstacle course on a daily basis, if you take them to a place where there are no obstacles, they are a super hit. <laughs> Anywhere in the world, they are going and succeeding in a big way. simply because daily obstacle course has made it into such great drivers. With third… you know, with a sixth sense, 
we're not just seeing what's coming ahead, what's coming on the sides, what's coming behind, we also know what's coming from the top <laughs> when we're driving. So it's fine but we are coming to a place where these things are being… the structural aspects of the nation are being cleaned up. And the third and the most important thing is the people. See, people are trying to build a nation, people are trying to transform humanity. There is no such thing. There are only human beings. If you want a great nation, you must do something to produce great human beings, there is no other way. <clears throat> if you want to produce great human beings, we have to facilitate and structure methods and systems where human beings are not curtailed. Every human being can find full expression to who he or she is. This is a structural thing which needs to happen, which is beginning to happen, but India has had a, a traditional system that people don't necessarily depend upon except for external activity. For their own development, they don't depend on any particular outside system. This is the reason no matter what happens, you will see the country is not disturbed in a real sense as other nations would be disturbed because there is an organic sense of being completely organized within myself. This is something that the entire world should get. This will be India's greatest offering, how an individu individual human being can be fully organized within himself or herself in such a way that no matter what happens, they will stay their course.